We recently discussed a supervised analysis and we talked about how uh, we could use specific vocabulary to describe each of the elements of that analysis. And if you remember a couple presentations ago, we, we actually laid out a few different problems. So now we're going to dive into one of the other tasks that we talked about. So in this case, we had the cohort of patients and we had measured their genotypes and an effective therapeutic dose of a drug. And in this case, we then wanted to predict for new patients what dose should be used. We decided that a supervised approach would be the best way to address this problem. So this is a supervised problem. Let's talk about how we can use the same terminology we used in the previous example to also describe what's happening here. So we have a cohort of patients and we've measured their genotypes as well as the effective therapeutic dose of a drug. Since our end goal is to predict the effective dose for new individuals, this means that our patients are going to be examples. So we're going to have the patient as well as the effective dose, and we're going to use the genotype information to predict new doses. This means that our, our patients are our examples, so we're going to put them in rows, and our each allele is a feature, so we're going to put those in columns. And again, we have labels. In our previous example, the labels were that yes, a gene was involved in a process, or no, a gene was not involved in the process. Here our labels are actually the effective therapeutic dose. So this means, like I mentioned, that our samples are going to actually be the examples. So each person is an example. Each allele, so every potential genotype, is a feature. And then our labels are made up of the, the doses that we've measured. The algorithm is going to take the examples, the features, and the labels, and it's going to build another model, sort of a black box model still, where if we had new measurements, so, so we knew uh, in this case the genotypes for a new individual but not the effective therapeutic dose, we could take those measurements, plug them into the model, and then get a prediction out of our sort of magic eight ball model for the, a potential dose that we could use. So this illustrates the same vocabulary that we talked about before, but in a different context. And it's worth noting that in the previous case, our samples were our features. But in this case, because we know something about the subject, our subject is actually the example. So while the matrix should look familiar, you should always fill out which becomes an example and which becomes a feature based on the problem that you're trying to directly address. In the next segment, we'll discuss similar terms for unsupervised algorithms.